Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name's Mila. I am a nutritionist living with latent autoimmune diabetes in adults, and I talk all things diabetes here on my channel. Today in this video, we are going to be talking about eight foods that need to be on your radar and on your plate every single day if you're living with diabetes. Before we get started, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. You can also join my free community at glucoseguide.app. It's a place for all people with diabetes to be able to get the care, the information, and the community that we all deserve. All right, on to the video. Leafy greens are first up. Things like kale, Swiss chard, spinach, collard greens. Their benefits are that they are low in carbohydrates, they are low in calories, they're high in fiber, and rich in vitamin. Leafy greens are also incredibly versatile. You can include them in soups, in stews, in smoothies. You can eat them as a side dish. You can change it up and have them as a salad. They're also easy to grow at home if you want to take that route, or you can always buy them from the grocery store and you'll find that you typically can get leafy greens for a pretty low price overall. Berries are another food. Blueberries, strawberries, raspberries. They are again high in fiber, low in carbohydrates, and they're also rich in antioxidants, so they're good for your body overall. Berries can also be frozen and used for later purposes, so if you want to buy some fresh berries, slice them up, freeze them, use them in ice pops later, use them in smoothies later, put them in your overnight oats. They have all kinds of applications and they're generally readily available to most people. Shop for regular berries and then just be sure to clean your produce properly. You don't have to spring the extra money, sometimes double for organic berries unless you really feel like you need to. Honestly, there is not that huge of a difference. All you have to do is wash them, prep them, stick them in the fridge, and then you can use them to enjoy. I like them as a little side snack for the day just to get my energy up. I also like to have them with a little bit of nut butter so I get that kind of like fat and protein in there along with the carbohydrates from the berries. They're also a great topper, like I said, for overnight oats, for yogurt and yogurt bowls, and you can also turn them into smoothies if you can't really think of anything else to do with them. Whole grains. This one is one that everybody freaks out about. So whole grains does include things like rice, quinoa, oats. These are heart-healthy items that are going to help you feel satisfied. While they are higher in carbohydrates, that is absolutely okay. It is just about finding a way to portion them and also pair them with foods that are rich in fiber and protein. Whole grains are higher in fiber, so they actually do help to slow that digestion of your food. And you can incorporate them in breakfast options, in things like grain bowls, or you can have them as a side with a protein of your choice. I personally really love the TikTok salmon bowl. It's one of my favorite things to make. It's white rice, canned salmon, some cupai mayo. I do like nori flakes. I do a little bit of everything but the bagel seasoning, some tamari. I have a great recipe for this on eating well. It is one of my favorite meals ever. And it's one that really does keep my blood sugar levels stable because of the balance of fat, fiber, and protein along with those whole grains. Whole grains on their own are going to spike your blood sugars much more quickly than if you pair them with other foods that include fat, fiber, and protein. Fatty fish is a great one to keep on deck. Sardines, tuna, canned salmon, mackerel. They're high in omega-3 fatty acids, which promotes heart health, which we are always looking for as people with diabetes. And they're easy to incorporate. So you can grill them, you can bake them, you can air fry them, you can add them to salads, you can have them as kind of like a meal on their own. Fish is amazing in tacos. You've got so many different options that help you incorporate a lot of these really good ingredients. And overall, they have these great benefits for your body in the long term. Nuts and seeds. So almonds, chia seeds, macadamia nuts, cashews, peanuts, black seeds. These are all high in healthy fiber, fat, and protein smoothie topping and they help to keep you fuller for longer so that feeling of fullness stays around a lot longer 
when you incorporate nuts and seeds into what you're eating. They also add a nice texture, a nice crunch. If you really like that crunch and crisp kind of taste and feeling, nuts and seeds are the perfect addition to be able to add to your meals. In addition, nuts and seeds last a really long time, so you can store them in a cool, dark place, and you can use them for a really long time. They end up being a nice snack and also are, in the long run, a relatively cheap food to add to your diet. Beans and legumes are the next. And so thinking of black beans, charro beans, pinto beans, lentils, chickpeas, they're high in protein, fiber, and essential nutrients. They're also extremely affordable. You can get a can of beans for under $2 at almost every grocery store in America, and you can do amazing things with it. You can do soups, you can do salads, you can do side dishes, you can take beans and do like a good bean chili with it to add that extra protein and fiber. You've got lots and lots of options in terms of using beans and legumes, and they are a great healthy alternative that's also filling and affordable. Greek yogurt is the next one, and Greek yogurt is high in protein. It has probiotics, and it is also a relatively low calorie addition. I love adding Greek yogurt to different things. I'll use a dollop of Greek yogurt on top of my tacos sometimes instead of sour cream. I'll mix up some Greek yogurt. And I think you guys have seen I've made like tons and tons of overnight oats recipes, adding Greek yogurt as a source of protein. I've done the magic shell yogurt cup kind of thing. Like, so, so many options with Greek yogurt. And the fact that you can buy it plain, typically I will buy it plain and I will sweeten it myself for what I need instead of buying a flavored version. Or if I want a flavored version, I'll flavor it myself. But it's a nice blank canvas. It lasts a relatively long time for dairy. And you can also use it in so many ways. You can use it, like I said, in overnight oats, in smoothies, using it as a sour cream substitute if you'd like. You can use it as a way to add some additional protein to maybe some like berries and grains that you do in a yogurt bowl. You have so many applications of Greek yogurt. It's a great versatile ingredient to have in your pocket and something that should be on your list almost every day. And the last is non-starchy vegetables. So cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower bell peppers, squash, all of those foods are going to be really great in terms of adding vitamins and minerals to your diet, but they're also low in carbs and high in fiber. So they're great ingredients to be able to stir into whatever you're currently making. So if you're making a stir fry, throw in some broccoli to make it easy. I've blended up some cauliflower and made a bechamel sauce that I used for macaroni to add some extra bulk and add a little bit of extra veggies and fiber for a mac and cheese dish. Using it purely as a side dish, just roasting some veggies and having that be like a delicious side can always work to your benefit and in your favor and are some easy ways to get more vegetables into your diet. I encourage you to give some of these a try if you haven't before you will notice such a great change in your blood sugar management by incorporating some of these foods into your everyday life. It's not an all or nothing approach. You don't have to change every single thing that you're doing right at this moment, but try adding one or two things in a week. Try something new and see what you can do to be able to add a lot of these blood sugar balancing foods to your grocery list and to the recipes that you're creating for yourself. Always remember to consult with your healthcare provider about your individual needs. And if some of these foods are things that cause allergies or don't make you feel good, find something else that does make you feel good and that you can tolerate. Because the idea of living with diabetes and finding food joy is that we find the things that we like, we crowd out the things that we don't, and we make life a little easier for ourselves 
and so much more joyful at the same time or able to eat the foods that we love and balance our blood sugars. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed my content, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I have a goal of getting to 100,000 followers by the end of 2024. We are more than halfway through 2024. I am a little more than halfway there and any support that you give to my channel is much appreciated. Don't forget that you can also visit hangrywoman.com slash coaching if you want someone to help you with your nutrition goals, your diabetes goals, and your overall health goals and getting motivated and staying accountable to the goals that you set for yourself. That's it. I am done. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye.